is the site of what will soon be the biggest cable car on Earth. It'll link one of the world's most dynamic cities with this, the world's largest seated Buddha at Tung Chung. It must withstand landslides, flooding, and typhoons. It's one of the toughest and most dangerous jobs in construction. But the project is already falling behind schedule. The rainy season is just starting, and a team of Swiss engineers has less than nine months before Chinese New Year and the grand opening. cable car construction workers, men and women who've honed their skills on the granite peaks and glaciers of the Alps. Men like Swiss engineer Eugene Manich. Battle-hardened with 30 years experience, he has built some of the most difficult cable cars in the world. Leading a crew of 14 specialists, his job is to construct the eight giant towers and hang the massive steel cables that will link the towers. The lives of thousands of passengers will soon be hanging on his expertise. Irish engineer Archie Blair is in charge of building the passenger terminals and the deep concrete foundations that will support the towers. Not only must his team contend with the inaccessible terrain, but also Hong Kong's complex geology. If he falls behind schedule, everyone does. Helicopter pilot Inga Baggerly earned her stripes in the Canadian Air Force before graduating to heavy construction. Inga and her daredevil fellow pilot, Martin Newsley, must ferry great chunks of steel, delivering them literally into the hands of Eugene and Archie's teams. One false move could spell disaster. This is the biggest and toughest job any of them have ever faced. This is the Olympics of building cable cars. All these guys who are here, they are here because they have passion for building cable cars. And I feel that because we are an excellent, we have an excellent crew out here. Five miles from the gleaming spires of downtown is timeless Lantau Island. And perched on top of one of Lantau's peaks is the world's largest seated Buddha. Today, it's a torturous hour-long drive from the town of Tongchung. Soon, you'll be whisked to the Buddha in just 17 minutes. In essence, a cable car works like this. Two steel cables are attached to a series of towers. Passenger cabins hang from one of the cables, and the other cable hauls the cabins, pulled by a huge engine. In Hong Kong, the cable car starts at Lantau's main town, Tung Chung. From there, passengers loop across the bay via Airport Island before beginning the steep climb to the Buddha. It's the quickest and easiest route. But unfortunately for engineers, most of the journey runs across National Park. And to lessen the environmental damage, planning authorities have demanded a minimum number of towers. But less towers mean each must carry a heavier load. Heavier loads need bigger towers, and the eight big towers are harder to build. Monday morning, May 23, 2005. The team from Swiss cable car company Leitner are six months into the job and have reached a critical stage. Concrete foundations have been laid for the biggest and most challenging of the eight towers. Tower 3, the monster. Set a thousand feet up a mountain, helicopters are the only way to ferry materials to the site. Tower 3 will be a giant, the system's linchpin. It's designed to support nearly 500 tons and be tough enough to withstand the worst of Hong Kong's notorious cyclones. This tower has to carry 
each side over 210 tons. And that's huge, unique in the world. Never happened before. So this is why the tower tree is so big. And this is why we call him the monster. The team's first job is to set the tower's huge feet in place. But nothing on this project is straightforward. Back at the Swiss headquarters, engineers are worried that the steel feet might not cope with Tower 3's enormous weight. The Swiss engineers have told Eugene the feet must be reinforced on site. His solution, an extra grid of metal bars. The engineers was not satisfied and then so what we have to do it, we have to put in some additional rebars between the studs. But it delays work. Very good. The task complete, they jack down the feet. Unluckily for the team, the heavens suddenly open. One of the biggest challenges on this job is Hong Kong's erratic weather. And the rainy season is only just beginning. Unfortunately, helicopters can't fly in heavy rain. And if the helicopters aren't flying, the men can't work. I'm absolutely frustrated because the uh, weather change every hour, rain, heavy winds, and now if you see it's, it's absolutely, uh, everything is upside down. With the cable car set to open in less than eight months at Chinese New Year on January 23rd, it's now a race against time. For Eugene's company, Leitner, this is their biggest ever order. But it could become their biggest ever disaster. And the man on the front line is Eugene Manage. This morning, Eugene is at the barge that serves as a staging post for the heaviest construction materials. They ship the giant barge to Lantau Island because it makes for shorter helicopter journeys to the construction sites scattered across the mountains. But there's just one problem. In the helicopter's downdraft, the barge can swing around dangerously. So, can you ask him if he thinks that this time the barge is stable, not spinning around when the big helicopter is coming? I'm not one thing I know, yeah. But how much? How, how much? These steel girders are destined for Tower 3, the biggest of the towers that will support the cable car. Up at the site, his team prepare for the heavyweight cargo that will soon be on its way. Like seasoned rock climbers, Christian Oberly and Werner Trutzel clamber nearly 70 feet up the frame using specialist boots and stirrups. Vertigo is not an option in this job. Robert Giesler, the loadmaster, coordinates action via radio with helicopter pilot Martin Newsley. Timing is everything. It's action stations. A heavy lift come off helicopter takes to the air. Leitner have brought this workhorse in all the way from Switzerland, especially for the job. they have just moments to align the girders. could lead to the loss of a hand, or worse. There's quite a bit of side wind. 
which is quite a problem. Apart from that, it's easy. One leg of the tower is almost complete, but Werner and Christian must move fast as the wind is picking up. And wind makes the job even more perilous. It's all about teamwork. You have to be able to trust your teammate. He has to know how you think, and you have to know how he thinks. As Christian says, it's all about teamwork. Each two-ton girder must hang from the helicopter at exactly the right angle, so that it can be easily placed in its final position. This girder has been wrongly balanced, and the men are forced to reattach the rope in a different place, wasting valuable time. Painstaking work, their worst enemy, the wind, is making the job increasingly dangerous. It's getting more and more dangerous because of the wind. The pieces catch the wind and spin around. Once again, Hong Kong's weather means construction grinds to a halt. We had too much side wind. The problem is that we should have gotten all the pieces aligned with the helicopter today, which we haven't. Despite the wind, the team are halfway through building Tower 3, but the remaining towers in the system are falling behind schedule. Irishman Archie Blair is the man in charge. What we're doing is absolutely critical, and if we fall behind because of the because we've got problems of design, which we have had, or because we've now got problems with the weather, that that has all got an impact on the potential impact anyway on the on the completion date of the project. He's heading for Tower Seven, the most problematic of all. Unfortunately for Archie, when they began excavating the site, they discovered a serious geological fault. We had to redesign the foundations. So basically what we've done is designed large transfer beams um, so that we can transfer the load from the towers out into, into better ground. And it's in the better ground that we have driven the piles and then the transfer beams transfer the load from the towers out into the piles. But this will take time. Eugene can't build the tower until the foundations are complete. And the foundations are far more complicated than originally planned. So this is our troublemaker. We're supposed to have that, that tower hand over to Lina from Maida on the 7th of January, 2005. And as you can see, it's a, a really tons of work to do. And this is like base of an Eiffel Tower. And it's just a normal cable car tower. So what can I say? There's another worrying problem Eugene must wrestle with. The heavy lift Kamov helicopter, crucial in the construction of the towers, is due to be shipped back to Switzerland in September. This is a deadline Eugene just can't shift. We have just to wait and hope the weather stays good. And if the towers, the foundations are not going to be finished for the 20th of September, we are in big, big troubles because it is no way to stop the Kamov going back home because we have a lot of, they have a lot of work to do in Switzerland. So you see the situation is really, really very, very critical. Nearly 6,000 miles away, high in the Italian Dolomites, one of Leitner's latest cable cars opened in 2003. It's a good example of the type of cable car they're building in Hong Kong. The man behind both Hong Kong and this cable car is project manager Marcus Schrentwein. In developing Hong Kong, Schrentwein adapted traditional alpine cable car design to the specific challenges posed by subtropical Hong Kong. It is one of the most difficult cable cars to build. And it's the most challenging cable car we built so far. We built cable cars uh, on glaciers, but Hong Kong, all, all in all, it's really a technical challenge. This one is a bi-cable system, the same as in Hong Kong. It works like this. 
the lower cable hauls the car up the mountain while the top cable is static, taking the weight and providing stability. Designers and engineers at the Swiss headquarters spent three years developing Tung Chung. Not only has the system been designed here, but most of the components have been built here too, and shipped to Hong Kong. But there is one crucial part of the cable car that Leitner don't build. giant steel cables that will carry the cable cars. This contract has been won by another Swiss company, Fatzer. At more than two miles long and three inches across, the cable is one of the biggest they've ever made. It'll be the critical link in the Tung Chung cable car. Rigorously tested, it can withstand a force of more than 600 tons. The lives of 3,500 people an hour will soon depend on it. Because today, the Mammoth 120-ton cable is being loaded onto a 26-wheel low loader. It's too heavy to send by air, so the cable begins an epic journey by road, river, and ocean to Hong Kong. Back in Hong Kong, Eugene has reached a crucial stage in the construction of Tower 3, the biggest of the towers. This is eight. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. North all together. You understand? This is wrong. Yemen time. Yemen time. Okay. This morning, his team are fixing the all-important saddles on the tower. These are the runners along which the cable will move. So this is the part where the track rope goes on, and this is the, the rollers, uh, the whole rope is going on. So they are going to be uh, set up one by one. Nothing is straightforward when building cable cars. The team have discovered the saddles don't quite fit the girders, and they're forced to cut them to size right here. Improvisation is the name of the game. We discovered that the, uh, the welding spots on the inside of the, uh, the cross beam are bigger, are higher than we're supposed to be. So we have to cut this uh, plates off and just modify them. With the saddles trimmed, they're ready to take to the air. Weighing in at nearly four and a half tons, these are the biggest chunks of metal that make up the tower. For pilot Martin Newsley, the main challenge is lifting the saddles safely from the barge, which shifts dangerously in the downdraft. Because the barge is, uh, is moving, the, the water is moving, so it makes you feel dizzy, and then you, 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 cannot do, you cannot take it off very precisely. Once it's in the air, it's okay. is to deliver the saddles safely into the hands of the construction team. A safety rope is attached so the men can maneuver the saddle into place more easily. Martin and the team communicate via radio using simple directions. Any confusion could lead to disaster. Communication is very important, so we try to give as much information as possible with a, with a few words. It's a dangerous job. It's, it's dangerous for everybody, especially for the, for the people on the ground, because they are close to the load. The helicopter, in an in a emergency, we can, we can jet this in the load. But for the, for the ground crew, that is, that's going to be a dangerous thing. 
It's precision work in extreme conditions, and so far it's going well. Nevertheless, elsewhere on the project, progress is slow. Delays in building the remaining tower's foundations have had a serious knock-on effect for Eugene. The schedule is slipping, and opening in time for Chinese New Year is looking increasingly unlikely. Everything is different, everything. You know, like, uh, when, when we start, like, set up, like, ourselves with Marcus and our engineers back home, like, set up, start up the job, you know, you are doing some plans, and you have uh, approximately an idea how it should go, and now uh, it's, it's completely, it's different. But deadlines are deadlines, and it's Eugene and Archie who are charged with meeting them. Both Leitner and Maida face huge costs if these men overrun. What's more, the difficulties they face are only set to get worse. The endless delays have reached a critical point. Back at Leitner headquarters in the Alps, a crisis meeting is called. The cool is the stillstandskosten des helicopters uns zu vergüten. Nur das Problem ist natürlich jetzt kommen wir in die Typhoon Season rein. Das heißt, wir haben allein im Monat Mai 18 Schlechtwettertage gehabt. 18 Tage, wo kein Helikopter fliegen hat können um, und wo im Grunde ein Baustillstand war. Okay. Und, This is the man who must ultimately decide whether to admit defeat and delay opening. Managing Director Martin Leitner. It's the family firm that's at stake. The problem is that we have now a Verzögerung haben von mehr als zwei Monate. The Hubschrauber is eigentlich nicht mehr verfügbar. Und äh, wir wollen den Endtermin Ende Januar halten und jetzt ist die Frage, was Thema, was kann man tun? Und den Übergabetermin zu verschieben, das ist ausgeschlossen. Das ist 23. Januar Deadline. Mhm. Und wenn wir so weitermachen, dann können wir den vergessen. Und vergessen nicht nur im Sinne, dass der Kunde dann ein Problem kriegt, sondern auch vergessen im Sinne, äh, dass, dass wir horrende Mehrkosten haben. Was unbedingt zu vermeiden ist. Ich bin schon optimistisch, beim am 23. Januar. The meeting decides the battle isn't lost just yet. Chinese New Year is still to be the opening of the Tung Chung cable car. Back in Hong Kong, today at least, the weather is good. It's a chance for Archie Blair and Japanese contractors Maeda to push on with building foundations for the next tower in the system, Tower 4. A fleet of three Lama helicopters take to the air. Like carrying steel girders, ferrying huge buckets of concrete to the site is dangerous and exacting work. It's dangerous for the helicopters because they are carrying, number one, they are carrying a load. It's at the end of a long, a long line and it's swinging about and they can't control that movement very much. The wind direction can change momentarily and because it's very mountainous terrain here, it can actually pull it right into the hillside. It's a delicate dance between the men on the ground and the pilots who serve them. One of the most experienced pilots on the Tung Chung team is ex-Canadian Air Force pilot Inga Baggerly. So long as you keep your mind on the job all the time, the, the risks are manageable. The weather is definitely a big factor here in Hong Kong, both the wind and the weather that changes so quickly. I think they have the harder job, myself, because when you bring a concrete bucket in, it's 2,000 pounds, and if it's really bumpy out, the bucket might be moving up and down, and these guys are trying to control a 2,000 pound bucket, we try to hold it at a good height for them, but we can't help moving up and down a little bit, and, and it can be a bit scary at times. Usually it takes only moments to unload the concrete. But suddenly, there's a dangerous situation. Two workers struggle with a jammed bucket in the helicopter's powerful downdraft. Brute force saves the day. But once again, Hong Kong's appalling weather halts progress. With a storm brewing, Inger and her fellow helicopter pilots are grounded. 
Maierda are way behind with the foundations for the rest of the towers. And with no foundations, Eugene can't move forward. It's now September 1st, 2005. Three months after the crisis meeting at Leitner headquarters about delays on the Tung Chung cable car. Since then, the situation has got worse. Much worse. Hong Kong has suffered one of the worst rainy seasons on record. Now the project is 12 weeks behind schedule. But at last, the rainy season is over. And today, Eugene wants to put the finishing touches on Giant Tower 3. All that remains is to attach the crossbars, which will allow easy access for maintenance. You see, they are, they are twisting to each other, so the pilot, that's a very, very difficult job. He has to lead them out, you know, in between. You see that this one, this pipe stays here, and this one is leaving with that crossbar. And this is the most difficult job on, on the difficult part on that job, to take it off from the barge. So we have to be prepared very, very well. Yet again, the weather is against them. This time, it's not the rain, but the wind. Robbie, the loadmaster, tests wind speed and decides to cancel the flight. It's too dangerous for the heavy lift come off to fly. Eugene has little choice but to accept the decision. We have 37 to 40 knots in the, on tower number three, and unfortunately we are not able to do any, anything, any, any lifts, any flight with the cam off. Now we have to call the guys back and that's it, but what can we do? That evening, the giant cable reaches Hong Kong from Switzerland after numerous delays en route. But it doesn't matter. The Leitner team aren't ready for it anyway. Marcus Sigrist, Tung Chung's construction manager, is painfully aware of this. The major delay obviously has been caused by not completing civil work. There are many factors which have played a role. Um, weather certainly was, was something which we couldn't calculate. Obviously we are far behind, we are trying to catch up, we are trying to get more resources into from our side to speed up the process. The roads are closed to traffic. Working through the night, Marcus helps position the huge cable, ready to be pulled between the towers. Oh! Cut. Oh! Cut. Oh! The following morning, and the weather is fine. Eugene and the Leitner team can finally finish Tower 3. Stand by, stand by, stand by, stand by. The crossbars are the most awkward of all the 40,000 separate pieces that make up the jigsaw that is Tower 3. This means installing them is difficult and the Leitner team have to be especially precise. It's always tense. No two flights are the same. It's always a new situation. Trusting the pilot is very important. Because if something goes wrong, you can pay with your life. Tower 3, the monster, is finished. <laughs> it's one of the biggest cable car towers ever constructed. And Eugene's men raise a little piece of Switzerland to celebrate. In effect, Tung Chung has been designed as three cable cars, not one. Two angle stations split the journey and change the route. 
Each section runs in a different direction and travels at a different gradient up to the giant Buddha. What I have done until now on those big jobs in Korea, in Malaysia or in Brazil, there were one section. So you have three sections here. So this is like triple up everything, you know. And for Eugene and his team, the biggest challenge still lies ahead. Now they must perform the tricky task of pulling the huge track cable across the first section of the system, over Tung Chung Bay. Starting at the passenger terminal, the cable is supported by two towers before being anchored at the first angle station on Airport Island. And weighing in at 120 tons, the cable doesn't get much bigger than this. It's like a giant tug of war. To stop the cable sagging into the ocean and endangering shipping, each end is pulled taut by the winches. It's a challenging task as they guide the huge cable down to the drum where it will be anchored. After finished, uh, the tension will be over 95 tons on each cable. So this is a lot of tension on it. Although the Leitner team have successfully pulled the steel cable over to Airport Island, they now must anchor it at the passenger terminal. This is where the Swiss engineers excel as they delicately thread the cable through the winching mechanism. Yeah, now you can see the, 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 the point of the cable comes in from level number two back to level number one over the anchor drum and into the main clamps. Just as they're ready to anchor the end of the cable to a huge drum in the terminal building, there's a difficulty. The guide rope has slipped. Any damage to the cable would be disastrous, making the cable car unsafe and delaying the project yet again. So Eugene is forced to rush in and help. But as the day draws to an end, Eugene realizes he has a much bigger problem on his hands. Part of the cable is temporarily being supported by a giant crane, and the cable is sagging. This is the uh, 17 mm track rope, and because of the stiffness of that big cable, we have to lift it up to 60 meters. Unfortunately for Eugene, local regulations forbid leaving a crane carrying a load overnight. This is because of the danger of high winds toppling it. Now we are in a critical situation. We cannot leave the weight during the night on the hook. We have to release. So what we have to do is we have to go on the other side of the station and just pull a little bit more. We have too much slack to this side, so we have to pull on the other side. And that's it, what's happening at the moment. Uh, Markus, lass mal uh, wegen dem Kran, es wird etwa halb in Uni, gell? Eugene's colleague, construction manager Marcus Sigrist, now becomes involved. Um, they cannot leave the weight on on the crane. There's, you, you can't do that. Um, there's a legislature here in Hong Kong preventing you that from doing it. But secondly, it's also for the sake of the cable. Let's say during the night, the hydraulics is bleeding, the cable will go down, it will damage the cable and ultimately jeopardize the, the whole operation. It's fast becoming a huge headache. The only option is for them to work through the night. But the team are already working six days a week, 12 hours a day, and a rebellion is brewing. Tempers flare, and we're told to stop filming. The Tung Chung project is way behind schedule, and the costs are soaring. Pressure to finish the cable car on time is pushing everyone to the limit. Yeah, don't, don't ask me about overtime. Overtime is not a problem. We just want to finish the job, okay? The fate of the world's biggest cable car is hanging in the balance. 
Hong Kong. The working day is over for most of the city's inhabitants, but not for Eugene Manich, chief supervisor of the Chongqing Cable Car. He's got a major problem on his hands. It's not just the relentless rain and wind that Eugene is up against. His team have spent the day pulling the huge cable between the passenger terminal and airport island. But disastrously, the cable has sagged, and they're not allowed to leave the cable supported by a crane overnight. The Swiss workers don't want to work all night. Local Chinese laborers are also in a mutinous mood. You know, now you should give us back what I give you sometimes when it's while raining to let them early home. So now we are in a critical situation, and I want you to stay back here and help us, okay? So we, uh, by the way, okay. And um, on, on Friday, five o'clock, we have big party here. Okay. It's now midnight. Eugene and Marcus have finally persuaded their men to stay on to solve the problem. At the end of the day, these men are professionals, and they know construction must go on. Vito Zerbrug is supervising the job. It doesn't always go to plan. You always have to think ahead, and sometimes it just doesn't work, and you have to adapt things. That's what makes it interesting. The team's hard work has paid off. With the cable taut, the first critical phase of the Tungchung cable car is complete. It's late September. The cable car project has been the hardest ever attempted by Eugene and his team. The terrain is impossible, the weather a nightmare, and the technical challenges a huge headache. But tonight, at least, there's a reason to celebrate. It's now highly unlikely that they'll finish in time for Chinese New Year. But Eugene and the boys have finished the first stage of the world's biggest cable car. This is just fun because uh, we had a couple good weeks, so everything goes fine. Right on cue, the heavens open. But tonight, at least, it doesn't matter. It's time to party, and they deserve it. Never you can drink enough in Hong Kong. No. Too much sun, too much. you sweat too much, pure water. What about your guys? What do you think? Ah, they have a drop sometimes. No problem. They deserve, but not.